Hello and welcome to DLF Pick Seeds product performance tour at our outdoor farm show site in Woodstock, Ontario. My name is John Goff. I'm the Vice President of Sales for Eastern Canada at DLF Pick Seed, together with Matt Anderson, the Head of Product Development for DLF Pick Seed North America, and Sylvia Megans, Manager of Product Development in Canada. We'll take you through a short tour of our, our site here in Woodstock. DLF, as an organization, is based in Denmark and specializes in seed and plant breeding for growers around the world. DLF Pick Seed Canada is based in Lindsay, Ontario and has been in business since the 1940s. DLF Pick Seed is the only company in Canada conducting foundational research in value-added forages, cover crops. In addition, we have a hybrid seed corn business across Canada. Our product performance tour highlights a number of new innovations that DLF Pick Seed is bringing to market in the coming years. These include new alfalfa varieties with a Phantomyces Race 3 resistance built in, our soil first cover crop lineup, new innovations in forage grasses, as well as new products in our hybrid seed core lineup. We've invested heavily in the development of new products that meet the needs of today's evolving Canadian farmer. During the demo, if you have any questions, feel free to use the chat function on the virtual tour site and DLF Pick Seed representatives will be happy to answer any of your questions. Hi, my name is Matt Anderson, Head of Product Management for North America. And I'm Sylvia Meegans, Manager of Product Development. Thank you for joining us at the Outdoor Farm Show today. Over 11% of DLF's total employees worldwide are involved in research. Within North America alone, we are home to eight research stations. Three of them are currently in the United States and five are in Canada. Three of them would be in Eastern Canada and two in Western Canada. Within Canada, we are currently the only company conducting private proprietary forage testing. Over the last five years alone, we have harvested over 50,000 plots across our five research stations. Thanks for tuning in today. We can't wait to show you some of our products here in Woodstock. DLF Pixseed has numerous soil first cover crop mixtures that can meet your cover crop need. Two years ago, DLF Pixseed acquired Lacrosse Seeds, which has added numerous resources to our cover crop lineup. With their help, we've established many soil first cover crop mixtures in our portfolio, and we're going to take a look at a couple here today. SF Cover Starter Plus has fall cereal rye, crimson clover, and soil first radish. It's best for erosion control, compaction alleviation, and weed suppression. If you choose to plant SF Cover Starter Plus, plant it at 30 to 35 pounds to the acre. SF Multipurpose is a soil first cover crop mixture that contains winter triticale, winter peas, soil first radish, and hybrid brassica. It's a great option if you want something that's easy to establish, will give you biomass production, and weed suppression. If you go with SF Multipurpose, plant it at 30 to 35 pounds to the acre. SF Field Fit is a soil first cover crop mixture that has spring oats and soil first radish. SF Field Fit is easy to establish, provides weed suppression and compaction alleviation. If you choose to plant SF Field Fit, plant it at 25 to 30 pounds to the acre. That's all we have here today to show you for our soil first cover crop mixtures, but we have many more soil first cover crop mixtures and straight cover crop seed that you can find on our cover crop selection tool. I'm sitting in front of Triumph HVXRR, our newest Harvextra alfalfa. It's a fall dormancy for winter hardiness one. The nice thing about Harvextra alfalfa is that it's not only Roundup ready herbicide tolerant, but it has 14 to 18% less lignin, has 14 to 18% higher fiber digestibility, and up to 25% more forage yield. The reason that you achieve this 25% more forage yield is due to a delayed harvest window. You can delay up to seven to 10 days compared to conventional alfalfa and instead of cutting four cuts a season, you would then cut three cuts a season. That would then mean that you're getting 25% more yield because you're allowing the alfalfa to stay out in the field longer. This will allow you to maintain your forage quality, but increase your forage yield. The other nice option is that you can continue to manage it intensively under a four cut system. You'll increase your forage quality and your forage yield will remain the same as what it is now. The advantages that Triumph HVXRR can offer you is, is mainly its disease package. It has high resistance to a Phantomyces root rot races one, two, and three. 
something not many alfalfas on the market can offer today. The Aphanomyces root rot disease was identified up to 30 years ago. It started out as race one, developed to 10 years later into race two, and 10 years later after that, we're now starting to notice race three. The main way to identify a Phanomyces in your field is you may see a paler color to the leaves, it may look like nutrient deficiency, it may look like herbicide damage. You could also dig up the plants and notice that the roots are turning a brownish, grayish color and starting to rot off the plant. You'll start to notice that your stand will be thinning out at a faster rate than what it normally would. It won't be as winter hardy and it won't be as high yielding as you typically expect. The solution to managing a Phanomyces root rot disease is to plant certified high resistant varieties. We can not only offer this in Harvextra alfalfa, but we can offer it in conventional as well, as we've recently released Eclipse alfalfa for the 2021 growing season. Eclipse is a fall dormancy 4, winter hardiness 1.4. It has high multifoliate leaf expression, increased forage yield, and increased forage quality. What we want to talk about today is the differences between two main grass species, timothy and orchard grass. In the past, timothy has been used kind of because we've always used it, but I think people need to be shifting more into orchard grass and especially into very late maturing orchard grasses. The nice thing about our testing system is that it allows us to rank maturity ratings for all of our species and all of our varieties within those species. So when we say we've got a very late orchard grass, we truly have a very late orchard grass. While timothy and orchard grass have some similarities, there are some major differences as well. The similarities being is that they each do not have a waxy leaf, so they dry down well for dry hay, and they both have extremely good winter hardiness. Um, they also have a very good forage quality as well. The main differences though are that timothy tends to be there for first cut and then does not show up for the rest of the cuts, whereas orchard grass has more uh, seasonal growth pattern and it tends to be there present in every cut. The main thing with orchard grass that you want to keep in mind is that uh, because of its persistency and how aggressive it is, you want to keep your percentages low in your mixtures when you're planting. No more than two pounds to the acre. We now want to talk about Festololeum. Festololeum is a very complex species and not all Festololeums are equal. There are a lot of companies selling Festololeums on the market, but there are many different types. The first type would be ryegrass type Festololeum. This would be Italian ryegrass crossed with a meadow fescue. It kind of takes the, the benefits from both of those species and puts them into one. This is a, a not a very persistent type species. Uh, it tends to winter kill out of over one to two years. You're looking at this for more of an emergency forage type situation. It's extremely palatable, extremely high forage quality, and extremely high forage yield in a very short period of time. But it does have a waxy leaf to it. It doesn't dry down very well. And uh, as I said, it does not persist very well over winter. The next species of Festivolium that we want to look at is, uh, is fescue type. Uh, this would be tall fescue crossed with perennial ryegrass. So again, you're getting more winter hardiness from the tall fescue component, but you're getting a higher feed quality advantage from the perennial ryegrass. The other nice advantage to fescue type festololeum is that it's a good alternative to meadow fescue. The advantages over meadow fescue is that it's higher yielding, it has a better disease resistance package, and it's still just as persistent in terms of winter hardiness as meadow fescue. Fescue type festololeum can also be used in a forage ration or a pasture type situation. We're now going to talk about what we can offer in hybrid corn. PS2955 GSX rib offers a lot of advantages. It has full insect protection above and below ground, along with Roundup Ready and Liberty Link herbicide tolerance. It's very good northern leaf bright protection and a very good overall disease package. It's very consistent across all geographies and prefers to be planted at higher populations, anywhere from 32 to 36,000. Also because of its medium to tall stature and wider leaf size, uh, and very good consistent ear size down the row is to make a very good option for a dual purpose corn. PS2932 is a new hybrid for the 2020 growing season. It's a 2900 heat unit or 96 relative maturity. PS2932 is a VT Double Pro technology, so it offers above ground insect control combined with Roundup Ready herbicide tolerance. Like PS2955 GSX rib that we just talked about, PS2932 VT Double Pro rib is also very consistent across all geographies. It also likes to be planted at a higher population of 32 to 36,000. You can see behind me, it has a very distinct upright leaf to it and also has a very distinct upright ear. Again, very consistent ear size down the row and ear height. 
PS2932 VT Double Pro Rib is also a good option for dual purpose. PS2793 GSX Rib is a 2700 heat unit or 91 day relative maturity corn in our lineup. PS2793 is a GSX which means it's smart stacks. It has above and below ground protection along with Roundup and Liberty. 2793 would make a great grain or dual purpose option. PS2778 VT2P Rib is a 2700 heat unit or 91 day relative maturity grain corn in our lineup. It's a medium tall stature which actually gives it the opportunity to be a dual purpose hybrid. You can see the ear is a long narrow ear with great grain quality and the plant has excellent stock strength. PS2778 VT2P rib has excellent resistance to northern leaf blight. PS2778 VT2P rib has above ground protection but is also available as PS2777RR in a roundup version. Our DLF Pixie Canada research program is unique because we are able to test our current products against competitor products against many experimental products from all across the world. This is our forage harvester that we use at our Canadian research stations. Our plots are 3 feet wide by 17 feet long and we replicate our trials 4 times so a variety is in the same trial 4 separate times. This forage harvester is a flail type harvester so we run it through our trials and it chops our material up to an auger which then chops the material finer. The auger pushes the material to the pipe up and over the cab into a hopper that then me measures each plot for weight. There's a tablet in the cab that records each weight of each plot. Then the bottom hopper holds all of the material so we can harvest more than one plot at a time. We also take forge quality samples of all of our trials. So we use the back hopper to take a hand sample of every variety that we want to take a forge quality analysis on so we can not only test each variety for yield but forge quality as well. Right now forge quality sampling takes a lot of manual labor. We're really excited that very soon this harvester will have an onboard NIR system that has a laser that will take a quality sample of every plot and then transfer that data right onto the tablet for us. <laughs>